What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about revisions in Revit. So in any complex project you're never going to make it uh, right the first time. So in most projects or pretty much all projects you are going to have some revisions along the way, some changes uh, and then some additions, things like that. Uh, now luckily Revit is one of those uh, pieces of software that make uh, revisions really easy to uh, kind of fix up and uh, they make the whole project easy to make adjustments to. But not only that, we actually have a dedicated tool set uh, that's especially dedicated for revisions. So in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about those tools and features that Revit has on offer when it comes to revisions. But before we get into that tutorial, just one quick thing. I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And also I would like to ask you to subscribe uh, if you like YouTube tutorials or and Revit tutorials to be exact. I make those each week. I make multiple tutorials each week and also I make uh, some advanced uh, Revit courses. Now those can be found following the first link in the description. There you can find all of my advanced courses over 50 hours of content as well as all of my Revit project files. I've got over 500 files so far, so you can kind of follow along with these projects. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Revit and the project file that I'm going to be using for this demonstration is going to be this office building. Now, if you want to download this project file or if you want to check out the full 12 hour course that they have on modeling this complete building, from start to finish completely, uh, check out my Patreon, as I said, first link in the description. Okay, now let's move on here to the first level. I have this level detail and annotation. As you can see, I've got all of the detailing work and all of the annotation done in this view. And this is a correct view in which you may be able to see some revisions. So let's check out how revisions are uh, placed in Revit. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to navigate here to the annotate tab. And then on the annotate tab, we have the revision uh, tool. So here we have this revision cloud. Now you have a revision cloud and then you have the like the revision menu. Now I'm going to start off with the cloud first. So here we have the regular draw tools on the modify tab just like with any tool that, uh, that utilizes uh, sketches. So here I'm going to start off with a simple rectangle and then maybe add this a curtain wall here in the rectangle and as you can see when you draw a rectangle it doesn't really place a rectangle it creates this sort of a bubbly structure and we're going to talk about customizing that a bit later on so anyways here i have this one uh, revision cloud uh, placed i'm just going to hit finish to exit out of that uh, let's now create another one just by going here to the revision cloud uh, for this one let's uh, come here to the column and click like this. Now, as you can see, uh, it creates, it's creating a rectangle. So I'm just going to hit the escape key once and now just switch to the circle tool and let's add a circle around the column. I think it's a bit more appropriate. And let's finally add one more revision here. So for that, I'm just going to use uh, perhaps just regular lines. So here I'm going to kind of uh, grab these three uh, sinks that we have so maybe something like this will do the trick and there we go so we have a more natural revision here now if I hit finish there we go now the problem is this is now one revision and I don't want that so if you make uh, a mistake like I did here where I created two sketches at once you can go into edit sketch you can select one of the sketches and then just go here to the copy to clipboard or just type in control C. Now once you've done that, just hit the delete key to get rid of that, hit finish, and then uh, go again into the revision cloud, uh, press uh, control V to paste, and then you can basically paste it in the same place. So once you paste it here, there we go, it's in the same position, you just hit finish and finish again, and as you can see now these are separate 
revisions. Now, it's really important to have three separate revisions. Now, in order to see the visualization of these revision clouds, I'm going to turn off the 10 lines. So as you can see, the Revit utilizes quite 10 lines for these revisions. Now, when it comes uh, to customizing the visibility or the graphic appearance of our revision clouds, you can either use the visibility graphic overrides over here and click edit. You can also use the VG shortcut. And then here you can go maybe to annotation categories and then find uh, revision clouds. So let's see revision clouds. Here we go. And then you can override the line work. Now, I'm just going to cancel out of this. And the reason for that is I don't like to make changes to the individual view because you might be uh, adding uh, revisions later on in other views. So what I like to do is I like to make that graphical adjustment on the project level and you can do that by going here uh, to the manage tab and then on the object styles menu uh, under annotation objects. If we scroll down a little bit under R we should have revision clouds. And here we can make some changes. So what I like to do is just change it from black into maybe a red, click OK. And then also here, uh, the line weight, instead of one, we can maybe switch it to something larger, like six. And then if I hit apply, OK, now you will notice that this is now a lot uh, more pronounced. So I like to have revisions like this basically because it kind of calls to attention, which is uh, what you want the revision cloud to do. Okay, so we do have our revision clouds, but we don't really have our actual revisions. So let's see how can we create those. So your revisions are going to be located either here on the manage tab and then here under additional settings, we have sheet issues and revisions and we have uh, a uh, window for that. Or alternatively, you can go here to the view tab and then here under sheet composition, we have revisions and you basically get the same menu. Now let's uh, let's see what do we have here for this menu. So as you can see, we have this sequence one, revision number one, numbering is numeric. You can change it from numeric into alphanumeric or none. Then we have the date. It's currently set to date one, but of course you can type in a date. Let's do September or January 1st, uh, 2020. Then we have the revision description. Here we can type in maybe fix this this let's say door and then we have issued now I'm going to talk about this a bit later on we have issued too so you can type in whoever is responsible maybe Bob and issued by let's say Mr. Balkan and also here we have the cloud and tag. So it would include either a cloud and tag. Now here for your revisions, you can add new ones. So as you can see here, we can add a secondary revision. This can be again, the same uh, date. Uh, now for this one is add structural column, for example. Also here we can add issue two. Let's issue this to Mark. And also it's me again. So that's Mr. Balkan. Okay, so with this in place, we now have these two our revisions. Now, as you can see here for uh, numbering, you can do per project or per sheet. Now, I prefer to number them per project uh, just because it's I, I find it to be more useful, but you can opt for the per sheet view. So those revisions would only refer to the, the, the sheet that you're on. Uh, moving on, here we have some numbering options, so you can make it either numeric and then you can play around with this, so the, the sequence starts from 1 and then you can add a prefix or a suffix, so maybe you can add S1 or R1 for revision 1 or something like that. I'm not going to change this around. And then you have this alphanumeric, which you can either click here or you can just switch the tabs here. So you can play around with the sequence here and also add a prefix and a suffix if that's something that you want to do. I, I don't, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. Now, what's most important about this menu as far as the graphics are concerned is the arc length. Now let me just apply this and click OK. 
zoom in over here. So as you can see here, we have these arcs and they are a certain size. Now, if I go here to revisions again, so that's on the view tab, under sheet composition, here we have revisions. If I open that up and if I switch this number from, from maybe two to one and hit apply, as you can see now, this is significantly smaller or the arcs are significantly smaller. So we're just uh, manipulating this number will give you larger or smaller uh, bubbles. So I like to stick to maybe one or 1 1.5 apply. I think this looks uh, decent enough for these views. Okay, so once we have those revisions created, now we can apply them. So if I just select this revision cloud, here we have identity data in the properties panel, and here we can insert a revision. So currently it's set to fix this door, so that's sequence one, and that's the one that we want to use for this one. So that says fix this door over here, there must be something wrong with it. Now here for this column, I'm going to select that revision or that revision cloud, and now let's uh, basically apply the revision, which is add the structural column. Uh, we just have this uh, kind of outline. Maybe we want to add a, uh, a steel column there or something like that. And here, of course, for this one, we can create a new revision. Now, let me talk about that uh, option here for uh, issuing revisions. So if I go here to the view tab, then go to revisions, here we have that option to say issued. So let's say we have already issued the add structural column. So that means that this revision uh, goes into this gray mode or ghosted mode, which basically means we can no longer edit it unless we uncheck issued. So that means that this uh, revision has been issued to mark. So if I just hit apply and then OK, what you will notice that if I select this cloud and go here to, oops, go here to revisions, if I try to click here, it's going to say can't add a cloud to issued revision just because that has been issued. So that is only fixed to this uh, here cloud. And if you select this cloud, you will see that all of the identity data is grayed out. So this needs to be fixed so it can be unissued and then the, the whole revision can be deleted. Now for the last one over here, let's add that revision. So let's go here to revisions and then let's add a new one. So for this one, it will be So to figure out new syncs, issued to, let's do give this to Bob as well. And then of course it will be Mr. Balkan giving the revision. Okay, so uh, let's create this, hit apply, okay. And then I can select this revision and then I can just change it even over here on the modify tab. I can go to uh, sequence three. Uh, figure uh, out this new sync. So let's figure out a new sync for this situation here. Okay, so you can also label revisions. So for any of these revisions, you can go to the annotate tab, and then here we have tag by category, and you can just uh, find that revision. And as you can see, you can add a little triangular tag to it. You can do the same thing here. So this is revision one, that's revision two, and this will be revision three. And I, I really like this triangular tag. Just uh, make sure that you don't include too many letters and numbers because uh, it can get a bit crowded in that small uh, triangle. Okay, one more thing that I would like to show you for revisions, which is really useful, uh, has a lot to do with the uh, one of those templates that we have for, uh, for just uh, for our sheets. So if I go here to sheets and then right click and create a new sheet, we have this title block. Now currently the A1 metric is loaded in and let's use that one. So this is the default like uh, uh, title block that comes with Revit. And what you'll notice is here we have this table. Now it has a, a number, a description and a date. And what, what this is, this is actually a uh, sort of a revision table. So if I just select that uh, floor plan, so if I scroll up here, uh, find the floor plan and let's first go back here just to make sure you cr we crop it correctly. So go to extents, crop the view uh, just so we can make it a bit smaller. There we go. Okay, so once the view is cropped, maybe uncheck uh, crop region visible just to make it a bit more aesthetic. Let's now go back here to the sheet, uh, find the view here in the project browser and just drag it over. 
place it here. Let's place it like that. Okay, as you can see, it is a bit too large for this sheet, so maybe we would have to play around with the scale a little bit or create a larger sheet. But what is important is if we go here into the title block, you will notice that here uh, in this table we have all of the revisions pop up. So here, for example, for the third revision, we haven't added the date, so that's why it says date number three. But anyways, that's that's what that table is for, and it's really useful because it's already built in. So if you're just using some of these uh, templates, you will uh, get that uh, that little revision table. Okay, so that uh, concludes this uh, quick tutorial on how to use revisions in Revit, how to create revision clouds, and then how to apply some revisions to it, and of course, in the end, how to issue those revisions. Okay, so if you want to get the project file, uh, just to try it out yourself, check out my Patreon, first link in the description, there you can find all of my Revit project files, as well as all of my advanced Revit courses, I've got over 50 hours of content so far and I'm adding more each week. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video and if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.